7 of the Constitution of the laid on the table of the Senate on Tuesday, the 26th of November, 2024. One, the 11th Annual Report, 2023-2024, on the measures taken and the progress achieved in realization of the national values and principles of governance. Two, the Annual Report of the State of the National Security for the period ended 1st September, 2023, to 31st of August, 2024. Mr. Speaker, sir, I rise to fulfill this extremely important duty and uh, I have seen senators have been provided with a copy of the State of the Nation address delivered by the President last week in the Chamber of the National Assembly. But where we were gathered both the Senate and the National Assembly, uh, Mr. Speaker, in fulfillment to this uh, quoted uh, sections of our Constitution, extremely important that the President gives an account of what is the state of our nation uh, to the representatives of the people that were gathered in the chamber of the National Assembly. Mr. Speaker, sir, uh, I want to appreciate that the wording in the motion that I'm moving is first of all a recording of the appreciation of the House and a debate in furtherance of our responsibilities as representatives of the people to interrogate this speech, Mr. Speaker, and see if there are points of convergence or divergence and what can we do about it, Mr. Speaker, because this is the account of the state of the nation as the President sees it, uh, Mr. Speaker, and he has backed his statement with facts and figures of what he feels and what are the indicators uh, according to him, uh, Mr. Speaker, of where Kenya stands today. As, rep as representatives of the people, Mr. Speaker, we are duty-bound to interrogate this statement and take time to read, perhaps through all the uh, 81 paragraphs, actually, uh, Mr. Speaker. And I'll beg not to go through each of the paragraphs, Mr. Speaker, because I understand uh, how difficult a time we find ourselves in. Uh, Mr. Speaker. In fact, it is at this point that I'd wish that the House takes note of the fact that today at the Senate Business Committee, Mr. Speaker, we agreed that in respect of extremely urgent business that is before us, though by our standing orders we have three days to debate this speech, we want to push as hard as possible to conclude it by tomorrow, late afternoon, uh, Mr. Speaker, and grant an opportunity to every senator that wants to speak uh, to this speech so that we will leave the remainder of the evening tomorrow as well as Thursday and next week, Mr. Speaker, for one, consideration of the mediated version of the Division of Revenue, uh, Mr. Speaker, which has just been tabled this afternoon, two, uh, county government additional uh, allocation, uh, Mr. Speaker, an extremely important bill that is presently uh, before the Mediation Committee those ones are yet to conclude, and I don't see Senator Tabitha uh, in the House. She's the chairperson of that committee. I don't know if there's any member uh, who sits in that committee. But this is a bill that will unlock close to Kenya Shilling, 60 billion in terms of conditional grants, additional allocation, uh, Mr. Speaker, to our county governments. Remember as well, Mr. Speaker, that immediately after the passage of the Division of Revenue, we have to do CARA, which is the county-specific fund allocation, to all the 47 uh, county governments and eventually, Mr. Speaker, do the cash disbursement schedule. All that has to be done between this week and the rise of the House on Thursday uh, next week. I deviated a little bit, Mr. Speaker, to appraise the House to appreciate how much little time we have in the next six days of sitting and how much business we have to transact and the extreme important nature of the business that is before us, Mr. Speaker. Because I don't know how you will face your constituents, Senator Lomonen in Lodwa, uh, without having passed Division of Revenue and CARA uh, over the long recess period from December all the way to February. We'll have extremely failed as a House, uh, Mr. Speaker. And it's my humble plea that we manage time prudently in the next remaining few days, Mr. Speaker, so that we conclude on that responsibility. I made that point, Mr. Speaker, to excuse myself from growing 
through each of the thematic areas that the president covered by the fact that as move of the motion I want to set uh, Mr. Speaker pace so that I cover the areas that I found extremely important in the speech and leave the rest to my colleagues to give their perspective and views on what they found to be important in the speech by His Excellency the President. Uh, Mr. Speaker, I appreciate Mr. Speaker the fact that on the day of the State of the Nation, the President reminded all of us, because you are leaders, that in this day and age, listening is actually a full-time occupation of leadership. That there are many things that we can abrogate as a leadership. Listening is not one of them. We have to listen full-time, from morning to evening, awake or asleep, because citizens continue to engage us, uh, Mr. Speaker. And I appreciate the fact that in his speech he records and says that as Kenyans continue to ask difficult questions of us as a leadership, they deserve a meaningful engagement, uh, Mr. Speaker, that you understand and you are thoughtful in your response to the issues that continue to be raised. They may not necessarily agree with what you're saying, but it is important that as you engage, you are thoughtful, uh, Mr. Speaker, and you are thorough to cover all the concerns that citizens uh, continue to have. And I like the fact that further down the speech, uh, Mr. Speaker, many of the issues of great concern uh, to the Republic were tackled, uh, Mr. Speaker. And he gave his reasoning as a leader of the nation on why certain things are the way they are, Mr. Speaker, and what it will take to make them uh, better. But listen, we must. We were reminded on that a particular day. And the response, Mr. Speaker, we have been reminded that the response has to be thoughtful. It's not just a retort of saying, yeah, we know that this is a problem, but something is being done about it anyway. You must carry the citizens with you, Mr. Speaker, to appreciate what is your perspective of the issues of concern to them and whether there is cause for alarm, uh, Mr. Speaker, or, Mr. Speaker, they should take it easy and appreciate that though we may not be where we ought to be, we are certainly not where we were, and that there is progress being made. And at the right time and pace, Mr. Speaker, we will eventually get uh, to the destination in each of the sectors that have been spoken to. Education features as a first topic, Mr. Speaker, and that is something that cannot be gainsaid about our society. Our society minds deeply about our education system. It is no wonder, Mr. Speaker, that on each of the budgets that we have done over the years, from as long as I can remember, Mr. Speaker, education has the biggest charge. It is a matter of great national concern, and no president, no leader, uh, Mr. Speaker, what they are sold can afford to take their eye off the education standards of our country, uh, Mr. Speaker. The reason why Kenya continues to be competitive globally, the reasons why we produce professionals that compete with the very best on the globe, uh, Mr. Speaker, is courtesy of the fact that we have a sound education system that has transitioned over the years and we continue to improve on it and make it better from education systems that I can't even recall, uh, Mr. Speaker. I don't know whether you sat uh, CPE at class 7 or 8, uh, Mr. Speaker, and I don't, I don't intend to ask you this. Uh, Mr. Speaker, but gazing by your age, I know that which you may have participated in. I know for a fact, uh, without having to ask him, that my whip, Senator Boni Halwale, does not know what KCP at class 8 is, uh, Mr. Speaker. But the, you can hear those that sat for the Cambridge exam are part and parcel of this house. The point is this, Mr. Speaker. Over the years, Kenya as a country has continued to improve on its education system and we must never, uh, Mr. Speaker, lose sight of the fact that the more we fine-tune it and make it better, we produce professionals, Mr. Speaker, that are able to take on the task of leadership in any corner of the world, and they shine, Mr. Speaker, and become better at whatever they are doing. Therefore, I appreciate the fact that this formed the very first thematic area that the, speaker, the President chose to address, uh, Mr. Speaker, because there have been concerns about the CBC, competence-based curriculum, uh, Mr. Speaker, rolled out in 2017 but continues to find struggle 
and seven years down the line, Mr. Speaker, has never really settled in the minds of ordinary parents. In fact, I remember, uh, Mr. Speaker, that during the campaigns uh, in 2022, this topic featured prominently, and many uh, parents were actually concerned, Mr. Speaker, that uh, we were rolling out a curriculum for which we were ill-prepared, uh, Mr. Speaker, especially in the public sector, and for which, Mr. Speaker, parents actually didn't understand. But there is something also that needs to be mentioned, that many of the time, despite their genuine concerns about CBC and what needs to be done about it, but also I know, Mr. Speaker, that there are parents who have issues with CBC on the very basis the fact that it is so involving that so long as your child is a CBC student, Mr. Speaker, you cannot afford as a parent to take your eye off their education program because many a times they come back home with assignments which as students they cannot tackle on their own without the help of the parent. And that is a big issue to many of our parents, uh, Mr. Speaker. And therefore, it begs the question whether this curriculum is working for and against or against against the citizens of our republic. Mr. Speaker, important questions have also been raised in this particular speech about the standards of democracy, human rights and fundamental freedoms, as well as the rule of law and transparency, for which later on in the speech, Mr. Speaker, the president took time to expound and lay distinction. In fact, to me, if you ask me, Mr. Speaker, if there is a topic that was so elaborately covered and a distinction drawn and a way forward proposed is on this issue of the status of human rights, uh, Mr. Speaker. The whole conversation about uh, fundamental rights and freedoms, Mr. Speaker, that many feel are under threats and the things that need to be done about it, Mr. Speaker, the President dedicated significant time in addressing that particular topic, if you read uh, through our speech, and you must appreciate uh, Mr. Speaker, the distinction that was drawn that many a times the people, for example, I like the fact that, and this House, Mr. Speaker, unfortunately passed a motion which up to now we are yet to see the benefit of. Because we asked our committees, including the Justice and Legal Affairs Committee, to guide the country on how we can exercise the rights of Article 37. That continues to feature in the president's speech. And the president is not a lawmaker. It is our duty. Because many times, protests have ended up uh, causing loss of life, uh, Mr. Speaker, and property, uh, and so many other disruptions, Mr. Speaker, because of the very fact that as a country, and as a legislature specifically, because this is our responsibility, uh, Mr. Speaker, we haven't been able to provide a roadmap to the country for how the country can enjoy these rights and freedoms without the normal debates that we normally have, Mr. Speaker, of how is it that I can enjoy my rights without necessarily disrupting the lives of other citizens who may not share or partake in the issues that are of concern uh, to me, Mr. Speaker. I like the fact that he pointed out that many times during times of protest, Mr. Speaker, this issue of infiltration, uh, Mr. Speaker, where you find certain either gangs mobilized by uh, people who have ulterior motives, Mr. Speaker, end up being used to undermine the very reason for which uh, citizens may want to protest. The whole topic of how police have handled this particular matter, uh, Mr. Speaker, the assurance that has been given that the IPOA continues to carry out this investigation. The only question that we must ask, Mr. Speaker, is how much more time do they need before we can eventually get a report uh, Mr. Speaker, because even in the very motion of the Senate uh, that we passed here in the month of June, Mr. Speaker, we had proposed specific things that need to be done in this country, including a review of the standing orders of the police on how to guide uh, citizens in terms of uh, protests, uh, Mr. Speaker. I'd move on to an extremely important topic, uh, Mr. Speaker, on the issue of debt. Debt continues to be uh, an extremely difficult subject for any administration, uh, Mr. Speaker. Remember what is our debt exposure to debt and the kind of debates that we've had on the floor of this house on what we need uh, to do. And I appreciate the fact that members of the Budget and Finance Committee uh, continues to remind us each year when we do the budget policy uh, statement, Mr. Speaker, 
of the need to reduce on our fiscal deficit, Mr. Speaker, because unless we learn to live within our means, uh, Mr. Speaker, we shall continue to be a country that is riddled in debt and our economy will never stabilize, uh, Mr. Speaker. But we must, Mr. Speaker, appreciate and learn to be factual about uh, the challenges that we continue uh, to face, especially in the debt space, uh, Mr. Speaker. I expect in the legislation that we passed here in 2023, uh, Mr. Speaker, we demanded of the Treasury as Parliament that each year, uh, Mr. Speaker, we are furnished actually with a report of our debt exposure and how much has been repaid, uh, Mr. Speaker, and how much more debt have we incurred over the years. Mr. Speaker, I want to believe that if that report had been properly filed, you would not have sometimes senators speaking ignorantly. I saw a senator over the weekend, I think it was Senator Onyonka, saying that uh, the debt accumulated the last two years is over 7 trillion uh, shillings. That's not accurate, uh, Mr. Speaker. And you know, I sympathize with him because he was speaking on the topic of integrity and the need to be truthful while lying at the same time. Mr. Speaker, if such reports had been provided to the House, senators would not have spoken out of uh, turn uh, like that. And therefore, I challenge colleagues who sit in Budget and Finance Committee, uh, Mr. Speaker, to make sure that the reporting mechanisms that we provide in the laws that we pass, uh, Mr. Speaker, are actually adhered to. Many of these reports that I table in this House, each afternoon, before even getting to notices of motion, Mr. Speaker, I table various reports from various, table, uh, various state departments. And I expect, Mr. Speaker, that senators will take time to read and react uh, to those particular issues. Mr. Speaker, it was calm and reassuring uh, to appreciate uh, the fact that we know that we are not yet out of the woods, uh, Mr. Speaker, but we are suddenly not at the place where we were two years ago. Repayment of some of the very critical debt that was pressing hard against us, Mr. Speaker, has help, helped us to stabilize on inflation, uh, Mr. Speaker, and has been boosted, Mr. Speaker, by the very presence of a strong uh, federal reserves, uh, Mr. Speaker, that we presently enjoy. I think the figure that uh, stated actually that the figure has surged foreign exchange reserve, sorry, not federal reserve, foreign exchange reserve, Mr. Speaker, from $2.4 billion to 9.4, uh, the highest in quite a number of uh, years, and that has helped us, Mr. Speaker. Of course, these numbers and figures, unfortunately, Mr. Speaker, do not mean much to the ordinary citizen until the day and time that we are able actually to translate the good figures on Harambe Avenue and here in Parliament into figures in the pockets of ordinary citizens. And that is a journey that Kenya must travel, uh, Mr. Speaker. It's not easy because much as these figures are factual, they are there, that we can confirm that inflation has dropped from 9.6 to 2.7 percent, uh, Mr. Speaker, the true hallmark and the proper measure of all this will be the day an ordinary citizen breathes a sigh of relief, Mr. Speaker, and say, I can feel that the burden is now lighter, uh, Mr. Speaker, which unfortunately, even as the President concedes in his speech, he knows that that is not the case, much as he's doing something about it. Mr. Speaker, there are many topics um, that I can speak to, but I have mentioned, and I want to be a good example, uh, Mr. Speaker, that in fact, after the seconding of this uh, motion, uh, Mr. Speaker, by the whip of the majority, uh, Mr. Speaker, I see Senator Eddie will want to do this, but uh, there will be time in future for you, uh, Senator Eddie. I promise you, next year you will do it. Uh, in fact, I will, I will allow you to move the motion uh, uh, next year, Senator Eddie. Uh, Mr. Speaker, I wanted to speak uh, on the topic of agriculture because I am a representative of farmers. And I must appreciate, uh, Mr. Speaker, what has been done in this particular space. The President pointed out something which uh, any of us that come, especially from the western side of the country, the rise of the sugar subsector once again. You will recall, Mr. Speaker, that in the last seven years, there has been an investigation after investigation of importation of sugar, sometimes even eating uh, the country being forced to partake of sugar that is substandard, uh, Mr. Speaker, because people who are being granted importation licenses and they were fetching for 
sugar from across the world, Mr. Speaker, some of which is not even fit for human consumption. But for the very first time, Mr. Speaker, we have enabled our farmers to be able to keep our factories busy and be self-sufficient in terms of uh, the demand for us as a country, Mr. Speaker. And for a long, long time, I haven't seen people fight for those permits to do importation. That's very good progress, Mr. Speaker, and I must appreciate and urge that more be done even in this sector. It is actually possible for us to have a surplus and feed the other commercial countries, uh, Mr. Speaker, so that our farmers, uh, Mr. Speaker, in the sugarcane growing areas, through this promise of working to ensure that we provide the uh, needed input to put more than 500,000 acres of land uh, into active use, Mr. Speaker. Actually, 500,000 is what has already been brought, but there is a need to do more, uh, Mr. Speaker, so that we can sustain uh, uh, that particular sector. The report on the progress in the uh, coffee subsector reported in that particular uh, part of the speech. We have more than 48,000 uh, metric tons increase than what was reported in the previous year, making an earning of an extra 25 billion Kenya shillings uh, to the citizens. The same is reported of what is happening in the dairy uh, subsector. Mr. Speaker, there is more. Uh, the last topic, actually, that I'd wish to speak to is on this issue of the universal health coverage, uh, Mr. Speaker. Uh, under this program known as the Taifa Care, where citizens are now eligible for all services uh, upon registration. And I like what the Ministry of Health is presently doing where each week they release a county-by-county county statistic of how many people have registered under Taifa Care. I think they do it every Tuesday or Wednesday. I saw for my county last week that they were actually at 19%. Uh, I had senators to take in interest in your counties because I saw their counties that are still as low as 4 or 5%. And I believe it is the burden of you as a leader because at the end of the day, uh, Mr. Speaker, what is without contestation? You can argue about so many other things. This should have been done better or the other. But the testimonials that I have seen, Mr. Speaker, is that for those that have registered, uh, Mr. Speaker, and be brought into this program, each time they have had an admission uh, in hospital, Mr. Speaker, their bills have actually been sorted. And that is extremely important, Mr. Speaker, because you know for a fact that many ordinary families are just one illness away from poverty. And if you don't have a sufficient uh, government program, Mr. Speaker, that covers uh, people, especially during their times of illness, Mr. Speaker, we can render so many families destitute. And I want to challenge senators that speak to your people, Mr. Speaker, so that you appreciate and grow the numbers. It will be my greatest honor the day I push Kericho County to get to 80, 90 percent of my citizens under Taifa care, Mr. Speaker, so that I know for a fact that the issues of being invited anymore to fundraisers because citizens have gotten ill becomes a things of the past, uh, Mr. Speaker. That is the very essence of what UHC is about, uh, uh, Mr. Speaker. And I want to challenge uh, many of us to take keen interest, especially our colleagues that serve in the health uh, committee, so that you provide the necessary oversight on this particular program, ensure that the dream that we have of ensuring that we have a world-class healthcare system. Remember, Mr. Speaker, that we actually provided in the bills that we passed in Turkana for facilities improvement fund, uh, Mr. Speaker, meaning that the funds that are being collected in our hospitals from level two all the way to level six, uh, Mr. Speaker, are being utilized for the improvement and the welfare of that particular hospital. And it's not tenable anymore, uh, Mr. Speaker, like used to be the case, where counties or even national government will collect funds and put them to a other use to the detriment of that particular health facilities. It is important that we guide, we guide our people, Mr. Speaker, because remember, we provided actually for, for uh, hospital administration committees at low as level two, that dispensary that is outside your home, uh, Mr. Speaker, that we provided it for in law, under the FIF uh, law, Mr. Speaker, for there to be committees that supervise uh, the implementation of that particular program in that small uh, dispensary. If we are not careful and we don't pay keen attention to it, Mr. Speaker, then you will find that Kenyans will do uh, sometimes that which you are very good at, only that many times you just ask 
we love accusing the political class of the same without necessarily uh, taking time to ponder and reflect on it, Mr. Speaker, is the fact that those monies can easily be lost if we don't put uh, a keen eye, uh, Mr. Speaker, to ensure that those charged with that particular responsibility respect and uh, live up to it. There is a promise which the President made, and I have seen in social media circle today somebody made a posting about the same, that they are actually a hospital owner. At the time of speaking to us, Mr. Speaker, the President says that Shah will actually pay all the October claims in full. I saw a posting today and so many hospitals listed alongside it having received payments, Mr. Speaker, and I need to verify because unfortunately we live in the days of uh, social media and uh, there are skeptics all around us. There are those that will believe. There are those like Sifuna, you will, you will have to show the actual payment statement, Mr. Speaker, for them to believe. But here is the point, Mr. Speaker, that who knew that there'd live to be a time where a public uh, health care program, the card that you carry, would actually be more attractive to hospitals than the card of uh, private uh, insurance claim, Mr. Speaker, because I don't think even the private care that uh, many of those that are well-to-do in society carry settle their claims that quickly. I must appreciate and record that, especially once it's confirmed that that is the case, that the hospitals that provided services for citizens in October have since been paid. With those very many remarks, Mr. Speaker, there are many things. I have only gotten to paragraph 34, but I have said I have to be a good uh, example so that uh, we are able to conclude. For those that came late into the House, we actually explained earlier of the need to cover this between today, tomorrow morning, and tomorrow afternoon, uh, Mr. Speaker, so that we can carry on with other very critical business that you have to consider before the rise of the House next week on Thursday. Therefore, Mr. Speaker, while there are many other things that I will have said, I'd wish to put a stop at that uh, on the many programs and the things that have been exposed in the speech and allow the rest perhaps to be spoken to by the rest of the members who will take time to speak uh, to this uh, particular speech, uh, Mr. Speaker, so that you're able to conclude in the time. With those very many remarks, Mr. Speaker, I beg to move and request the majority whip, the Senator for Kakamega, Senator Dr. Boni Halwale, to second. I thank you. Thank you, Senator. Boni Halwale, just one moment, please. I have a communication from the chair.